missionary points throughout the globe that this congregation is now supporting, has supported in the past, and will continue to support. And as we begin a new year, it's exciting to know what God is doing in different parts of the world. Now, today we are blessed to have in our presence Brother Gerald Andre, who God has called from Haiti, and God is calling him to go back to Haiti frequently. Well, he's, and he's going back, he, he's been going on multiple trips uh, as he is able, and I, I will let uh, him tell you more about his mission, uh, but uh, I would like for us to, as we begin this year, uh, along with that beautiful blessing, that may God bless our congregation so that not only that we may be in good health and that it may go well with us even as it goes well with our souls, that we may walk in the truth and that we may also be fellow workers with those who go out and do the work of preaching the gospel and serving others in the name of Jesus. And then we can be fellow participants in the gospel, even as this congregation in the first century uh, was a participant in the work of missions where these workers went. Well, that is about what I'm going to say for this morning. And I want to ask Brother Andre if, if he'll come up. I'm just going to hand this microphone off to you, and then I will set up the projector so you can show us what you are doing. Sit down next to him. He's 
side of the bed. I never see something like that in my life. The man is close to death with a lot of joy, readiness to go. And I would ask myself, and I sit there with my head down, thinking, asking myself questions. If that was me, I'm ready for that day. I realized that so there's a lot of things to accomplish. And the man that he's been working for all the moment of his life, and he's ready to do that. So for all, for all of us who are still alive, it's uh, we cannot count how much blessing we have. That's why we gotta give to say thanks to God. But at the same time, the Bible says we need to say thanks to whom who help us achieve what we achieve in our life. That's why I'm here today to say thank you to you and happy new year. And all of us who are who have been here, so we may have some goals, different goals we've accomplished yet, but the fact that we're still alive, we have a huge blessing. There's a lot of people who wanted to be here, but they cannot, they have a life support. Some of them are gone, but you and I are still here. It's a blessing. There's no cost for that. Mm -hmm. And today I come before you to say thank you and share with you some uh, good experience. And my wife told me to remember that place. And my wife, she's from the city of Cape Haitian, and when she know that I'm, I'm a minister, and one time I invited her to go to church, she never wanted to visit my church where I am from. So one day, she wanted to give me a surprise while I was preaching and then she just showed up with a bottle of liquor. And I was really in shock that day. <laughs> See how the word book in my life myself. Now, this is the place, brothers and sisters, we, the Nero Church of Christ has been gathering for more than 26 years and a half. Patient Praying God. And the place they worship that doesn't change their faith for 26 oh no. This May, May 16th will have been 27 years. Because we're not gonna be able to finish the building. <laughs> They're still here for 26 years and a half. Praising God. Uh, one thing I'm grateful <coughs> about is because the people are educated. They stay there and walk, and the church keeps going. It's pretty young church. And for 2019, we have been missing some members that gone. And we're grateful we were a part of their life and get them ready to meet the Father. Mm -hmm. So we're grateful for that. <coughs> and this place, that's where we are right now, we're worshiping, and this house is not ours. Is a sister, the first, no, the second member when I was, went to New York to evangelize when I was graduating from Dominican University and uh, New Brunel. And I went to work in New York uh, for my first evangelical walk. So the first member was a brother that could not see physically. The second one was an elderly person, 82 years old. And when we try to find a place, I don't have no money to start a congregation, she said, well, we have this place. If you don't mind, just come here and worship here. That's why we started here. And then she passed away. And then her family respect that. They keep us in that place still for 26 years and a half. Mm -hmm. Right here. Let me show you. So it's a humble house, but we thank God for that. This is how they look like inside. And we want to thank you for the chair. If you look at this white right place right here, we used to put some block and wood and sit down. And then only give the, uh, I, I don't know how I, you can miss those chair right here. I cannot see them very well. Uh, but uh, uh, recently, Roman Church of Christ gave us some chair and we thank you for that. And this is the place that the place is look like right now. And this is Brother Andre, this is Brother Francis. But the process was at the church and she was a little boy. Uh, it was about 14 years old when I started that. And I treated them like my son. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just grow up. I saw him grow up. And this is our pulpit. 
I'm pretty sure you're not going to have a business like that. <laughs> Businessmen, and then go back, and people really appreciate to see me back again. I'm not giving them back. I'm not abandoning them in their journey of faith. And then Brother Francis is with me. That pulpit is uh, older than my son. Uh -huh. He's 26 years old and a half. Wow. That little pulpit right there. So this is the cement where we buy the last time to start the construction. When we get there and people start, uh, I don't know how to say that, crying and happy. Mm -hmm. And one thing I want you to think about that brother and sister, God doesn't have a limited time when he's gonna bless you. It's, it's up to him when you can receive the blessing. And that's how we started our construction project. This is the, uh, the back, the rebound. That's uh, our uh, center, uh, center and walk. We have the base. I've got the block. Uh, one thing I want you, want you to pay attention about it, all of those green blocks that cost dollar fifty cents US money. In Haiti we don't have dollar, but everything you buy is in US dollar. So you have to say, but I want you to try to think what's the problem. And then to keep moving forward. Because I wanted to people to see um, I'm not just preaching the word. I put my hand on the wall, and that kind of went the brothers and sisters over there to me participate in the, in the walk. But I also did try to make some block as well. I believe I made five. I wanted to do seven, two broken on my hand, but okay. <laughs> this is my material we buy to keep working on the construction. And that's, what, that's what you work. I don't know how to say that in it. <coughs> but I also work in from the Oh, this is our home depot over there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's a loans, but that's where we get our material. <laughs> so you have an idea how they look like. Yeah. We have to bring that uh, that truck, that uh, that uh, that truck, and to put that in. Is that a dump truck? To put it uh, to transport that to Nilo from Cape Haitian, and then we get to Nilo. We try to have this brother to take them down now. And one thing I want you to I want you to be aware about is that we have water problem in the road. We have to buy the water from uh, we got those Chinese and Haiti now, but those machines is expensive for that. And now we have to buy all of those are 150 good, uh, 50 gallon water, 55 gallon water. We have to transport that from the river, uh, 11 miles away from where we do the construction. Yeah, yeah. We try to build up the river, but the honey try to help and everything. And that's what we believe in. The, the minister, the, we give example, no, not just the minister, the Christian. We not just, our life is not just, we preaching by action and by word. Yeah. That's what I believe in. Yeah. Okay, now we have some, some blocks done, but for now we have about 3,000 blocks ready to put on. With 3,000 blocks gonna help us to fill up the building. So now, that's how the column looks like. <coughs> um, each column costs us about uh, about uh, $1,800 uh, US money. That's in $1,800 US money, each column. Okay. Okay, now that's how the base, if you look at here, under the ground, this is an after the earthquake, we have a lot of churches building that been destroyed after the earthquake and Matthew. Uh, now the government has to uh, see a uh, plan. So if you look at here, under the ground, we have four feet of concrete and rebound and the metallic tower. So that's called anti-seismic preparation. I don't know how that can protect, but that's what they say. So if you look at right here, we got uh, the size of one feet under the ground for four feet, just to protect because the government and Haiti now make the decision, if you have a building more than 50 people that gonna gather that is declared as a public domain. 
So now that's what we that's what I had the first base. We cannot use it as a church now. We forced to do that like that. So in Haiti right now, you cannot build churches without having a building there. So we have that. Now we complete that. That is phase one. We finished phase one. Now we move into phase two. Now that's how it looks like. This side is for the school, and what we are gonna talk about a little bit. Keep moving. Now that's a phase two. The phase two, we keep moving, we're gonna do block 20, and then we're gonna put Wimba inside, concrete again, we put the cement on the top, all around, and then we, that's where we were. Now we accomplish it. We finish everything. We got the mess. We got the scenario. Now we try to fill in. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna put block all around. We have the block already. To put all around the building. What we need now, we need a roof. Door and accessory to fill in that building. And for that, we found with you, here in home, we would never they're never able to accomplish that. And we wanna thank you for that. And we appreciate what you and we want to encourage you to keep helping us because we need your help. Because the journey is a long way to go. Like the previous section, the second section, the other side, those are completion as well. At the other side, the construction. Because if you look at this side, we're going to have the theological school training for preachers. And the other, this side is going to be the church building where we're going to gather. And this particular side is preachers that we here we're gonna train women. Because in Haiti, ironically, women stay in the house, the men go to work. So we try to change that. If women go to work, men go to work, the mother the, the house gonna have more money to support their family. That's why we try to encourage them to educate them. So we hear. That's how we're gonna look like. Can you imagine how we started? After 26 years and a half. This year is our goal, is our prayer to go there. This place up here, when we one of you decided to go to Haiti with me, which I'm invited to go, you're gonna stay there. I have the room or visitor as well because without our support, your support in all the Church of Christ in America, we would never be able to get there. We're not there yet. This year what we our prayer we try to accomplish everything that the Bible because we have the block already. So we need to put that roof. And we need to finish that. Isn't it amazing? If you look at the way we started and where God take us, that most of the people when they see that, and I, I purposely I put a big picture in the, in the street, said that's how it's gonna look like. And we got two baptists close to us, and they said, man, God not in those people because they have been there for 26 years, they could not have a building. And believe me or not, it looked like a competition because you see the small building, the mission baptists go there, they build. Fantastic building. <laughs> and then the Adventists go there, they try to close us. <laughs> they build a gigantic building. And this year, when I got there, I asked the friend, can you give me that? I said, give me a big picture. I put it right there. I said, well, I said, God is the one who bless. <laughs> I put that sign. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, and then the next day, the pastor called me and said, say, Brother Andre, man, I respect your faith. <laughs> Say, I would like to be like you one day. So, well, let's keep praying. So, that's what we need. That's where we want to be, my brothers and sisters. And I want to thank you. I, I don't have a wooden dictionary. I, I was asking Brother Ellie, please find me a wooden dictionary I can get to express my gratitude to all the Church of Christ. There is none in my house. Okay, now that the other side, that's, that's, that's going to be nice. She is one of the persons that challenged me when I get there. When I got in Milo, I was seven, 
19 years old and I had been about, I was in New York in July. I was about to turn 18 years old on September because I finished high school a little bit early. And when I went to seminar in the Dominican Republic and I planned and the minister take me there and to walk and after that I go back. When I graduated, I go back to New York. She said, if you stay in New York for more than five years, I will become a member. I will truly believe you are the man of God because most of the church come to me they cannot stay. They go. Probably you don't make the news. If you go on the internet, you check and buy good Moses Jashar. He's the most prominent politician in Haiti. And Milo is the house of uh, Christoph, the king, that's from England. And Milo used to be Haiti capital as well in 1800. So that means it's a, a historical city. It's not an easy place. You know, you just have one word to go in there, one word to go back. It's a strategic city. You know, that's where the citadel is located. You know, she said, if I stay there for more than five years, after 11 years, she said, he's still here. <laughs> <laughs> now, today, she's become his sister. Whole her family part of the Church of Christ. Man. Mm -hmm. Even her mom in baptized. Mm -hmm. And in fact, her son is one of the preachers we have in New York. Mm -hmm. Thanks God for that. We try to build that building. It's for those people. <coughs> for what we have been doing here, this man, the house we worship is for his mother-in-law. After all those years we were here, this man <coughs> said, you really, truly, brother Andre, a man of God, we have a problem. It's for her to become a Christian right now. Those are the new preachers. Because I know that my days count on earth. I don't want to let the work unfinished. The day I'm not here, Kayla and Jack are going to keep preaching the gospel here. But in Haiti, I need those guys as well to keep doing the gravel walk. Why we have so many small groups is because the last time when I went to Haiti, we have a political turmoil. I could not make it to four points. We have a satellite school in Kwanemuke. Uh, in, in fact, if you look at the board over here, you will see that those are my, uh, our students. We got about uh, uh, 89 students over there. And we got um, a satellite school in Jeremiah. We got satellite school in Okai. We got satellite school in, in Gonaive and in Kepeishen. Five places. We communicate with them by through Skype and by internet, by this people really looking to know about God's word. They want to know. And then if you look at their face, those are the second class, that the new class, we just started with them. Because the more active classes, we could not meet with them. And I don't know, we didn't have a, my phone with uh, battery, we didn't have to charge, we have some of them. So those are the newest group. And we, then when, when they sell building, we said that we're gonna have a school for you guys, we're gonna start meeting in that place. Hey, that school is gonna fill up of people. This is where they can sleep. If you remember the lady I just spoke, is uh his uh the other sister's son. Now he's a preacher, he's in charge of Milo and Brother Francis right here. Those are my right, my brother. I know I put none of them on the left hand, both are my right hand. Those are the guys when I'm in Milo, they know everything. What I'm gonna do, I trust them because they born out of my hand. I treat them like my kid. Now, Brother Kessler is married, he has two, two kids, and Brother Francis also is married, and they're working over there really hard. And I thank them for what they have been doing in this ministry. Brothers and sisters, what you're doing is a good thing. Uh, we got a hundred of people in here that feel blessed, that receive that blessing, and we thank God for your good heart. That's how people make their living over there. That's a brother Kelsey wife, Sister Nadine. And she was doing that for me. The, the gesture of gratitude. I was given a public speech when I'm going to Haiti. I'm not just sitting in the classroom. I'm going public as well to keep preaching the gospel. This is Sister Lola 
that the first sister that was converted to Christianity and this many his husband and his three kids. In fact, she is her daughter. You remember the lady that said, if I stay there for more than five years, that her daughter, her granddaughter, all of them become part of the church. In fact, she is the youngest member of Church of Christ in Haiti. And she is her grand aunt. And she is the oldest member of Church of Christ in Haiti. She got 102 years old. Yes. I forgot the last one. Only thank you for what you have been doing. And we appreciate you and we love you. And most of this year, I hope God will give you health, longevity of life, and prosperity. Mostly keep it us high and safe. May God bless you. Father, thank you for Brother Andre. We thank you for our brothers and sisters uh, in Milo. We thank you for this privilege of meeting them. Uh, though they're a long distance away, we feel as if they are close to our hearts. Thank you for introducing us to family members that we didn't even know we had. We pray, Father, that you will help them to be of good health and help them to prosper as their souls prosper and help us to discern how you would like us to help them. Uh, and not just them, but people throughout the world uh, that you have uh, called to our attention. Uh, hear our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So um, we will uh, now just open the invitation if there are any special prayers that have not been expressed or if the Spirit has spoken uh, to you through his word or through what has been said today and you feel you need to make a response in any way, uh, please do so as we now stand and sing the song of invitation. Bring Christ your broken life so 